Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm gonna be doing um, 802 practice exam um, to be able to uh, use to study. Um, hopefully this video helps um, whoever watches it um, and also me. Um, I'm gonna go f uh, a little faster pace uh, because some people requested that um, from the last video. Some people requested that I um, <clears throat> that I um, go a little faster and don't and and try not to stop to explain every little detail. So I'm gonna try to do that uh, for you guys that uh, requested that. Um, um, <clears throat> uh, let's begin. Um, <clears throat> Um, let's start with the first question. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. This is one out of a hundred uh, questions. Um, so hopefully I'm able to do a good job and uh, explain everything that uh, needs to be explained. Please comment. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe if possible because um, it all helps. Give me feedback to just uh, let me know how I'm doing um, <clears throat> and how you're uh, enjoying this video. Cool. Okay, let's begin. To connect to a Bluetooth headset um, to a smartphone, uh, what do you need to do? Select the two best answers. <clears throat> uh, answer A, peer the device to the phone. Answer B, install Bluetooth drivers. Answer C, enter a passcode. Answer D, disable Wi-Fi. <clears throat> I'm going to go with uh, peer the device to the phone and also enter a passcode. Uh, feel free to pause the video to be able to read this um, description answer because I'm gonna be skipping over it just to uh, go a little faster uh, throughout the video okay <clears throat> next question which of the following should be performed during a hard drive replacement to best maintain data privacy a completely erase the old drive prior to disposal B format the new drive um, twice prior to installation. C. Only use FAT32 file systems when formatting the new drive. D. Install antivirus software on the computer before removing um, the old drive. <clears throat> um, I'll say completely erase the old drive prior to installation. Uh, prior to disposal. Completely erase the old drive prior to installation. <clears throat> yep. Awesome. Next question. Um, hold up. Oh, just in case you want to pause, um, then I'm going to go to the next question. Um, what can be described as a mobile device <coughs> sharing its internet connection with other Wi Fi capable devices? <coughs> a mobile device sharing its internet connection with other Wi Fi capable devices A. USB teetering. Or, uh, B. Wi Fi sharing. C internet pass through or D Wi Fi teetering. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with Wi Fi teetering, and it's correct. So, Wi Fi teetering is when a mobile device shares its internet connection with other Wi Fi capable devices. Wi Fi teetering. Next uh, question Before implementing a solution to a problem, which of the following should be done? Before implementing a solution, should you A, determine what has uh, changed, B, perform a system backup, C, test the solution, or D, document the solution? I'm going to go with perform a backup before you do anything to anybody's stuff because <clears throat> that just makes the most sense. Uh, before implementing a solution to a problem, which of the following should be done? You should perform a system backup. How much free disk space is required to install Windows Vista? For Windows Vista, <clears throat> I'm believing that you need 15 gigabytes of free space. For Windows 7, I think you need uh, 16 gigabytes. And uh, for Windows 7 64-bit, um, uh, I think you need about 20 gigs. So, uh, but, but for Windows Vista, I think all you need is 15 gigs of free space to install Windows Vista. Awesome. You need 15 gigs to install uh, a free space to install Windows Vista. Um, 
What is the maximum processor requirement for Windows Vista? Answer A is 133 megahertz. Uh, B is 233 megahertz. C is 800 megahertz. And D is 1 gigahertz. Um, I'm going to go with 800 megahertz for Windows Vista. So what is the minimum processor requirement for Windows Vista? It is 800 megahertz. 800 megahertz for Windows Vista. Which power saving mode enables for the best power savings while still allowing the session to be reactivated later? Hibernate allows <clears throat> for the best um, uh, uh, allows um, for the best power savings while still allowing the session to be reactivated later. Later, so Hibernate <clears throat> allows for the best power saving while still allowing the session to be reactivated later. Hibernate. Okay, next question. Which of the following disk arrays provide for false tolerance? Select the two best answer. Answer A, span volume. Answer B, rate zero. Answer C, rate one. Answer D, rate five. Um, I'm gonna go with answer C and answer D, which is rate one and rate five. Rate one, I believe, believe it's mirroring. Um, a mirror is like a copy. Think of it as an actual mirror. Two mirrors looking at each other. One mirror breaks, you still have the other one. Rate five is, um, I think, striping with parity, a uh, parity bit or something like that. Um, it, it provides redundancy, so if you lose one, you still have uh, the other ones to uh, uh, recreate uh, that drive. Awesome. So which of the following disk array provides for fault tolerance? Rate one and rate five provides for fault tolerance. So which troubleshooting command? Um, hold up. Okay. Um, which troubleshooting command enables you to determine connectivity problems on a Windows XP computer that cannot connect to the internet? On a Windows XP computer that cannot connect to the internet. So which troubleshooting command enables you to determine connectivity problems on a Windows XP computer that cannot connect to the internet? IP config slash all, IP config slash renew, IP config um, slash flush DNS, IP config slash release. I'm gonna go with IP config slash all. And it's correct. Um, uh, next question. A user recently purchased a new wireless 802.11n router. After connecting a laptop to a wireless network, he notices that the signal strength on the laptop is poor and only connects at 11 megabits per second. The user moved the laptop next to the wireless access point and is still experiencing the same issue. Which of the following is most likely the cause? A. The cable modem is faulty. B. The laptop is connecting to the incorrect wireless network. C. The router's wireless card drivers are faulty. Or D. The wireless antennas on the router needs to be replaced. Guess what answer it is? Yup, that is completely right. The answer is um, the laptop is connecting to the incorrect wireless network. Alright, next question. Which user group permission level has the highest amount of access on a Windows computer? A. Supervisors B. Administrator C. Power users D. Backup operators That's right, the answer is B. Administrator Alright, next question. Which tool would you be using if you were setting the computer to boot with selective startup feature? A. Task Manager B. Recovery Console C. Safe Mode or D. MS Config That's right, the answer is D. MS Config Alright, next question. A customer uses an unencrypted wireless network one of the users has a shared folder for access by any computer. The customer complains 
that files sometimes appear and disappear from the shared folder. What can be what can you do to fix the problem? Select the two best answers. Um, answer A, enable encryption on the on the router and the clients. Answer B, encrypt the disk that has the shared um, using EFS encrypting file system. Answer C, increase the level of security on the NTFS folder by changing the permission. Or answer D, change the share level permissions on the shared folder. I'm gonna go with answer A, enable encryption on the router and the clients. And answer uh, C, increase the level of security on the NTFS folder by changing the permissions. Correct. Next question. Tom has a 30 gigabyte hard disk partition known as the C drive on a Windows Vista computer. He has 1.5 gigabytes free space on the partition. How can he defrag the partition? Um, answer A, he can run the disk defragment in the computer management. Answer B, he can run, run defrag.exe minus F in the command line. Answer C, he can run, run defrag.exe dot minus V in the command line. Answer D, he can run defrag.exe minus A in the command line. Um, I'm going to go with B, the defrag.exe minus F in the command line. And I am right. Next question. How can how can you find out which type of connection the printer is using? How can you find out which type of connection the printer is using? Right click A, right click the printer, select properties and click the sharing tab. Answer B, right click the printer, select properties and click the advanced tab. Answer C, right click the printer, select properties and click the separated page tab. Answer D, right click, right click the printer, select properties and click the ports tab, which I'm going to go with. So how can you find out which type of connection, connection the printer is using? Right click the printer, select properties and click the ports tab. Show answer. Okay, next question. You need to view an application's error that has occurred today. Application. Hmm. Which tool should you use? Should you use... Uh, answer D, FSC slash stand now. Answer C, MS config. Answer B, local security policies. Or answer A, event viewer. I'm going to go with answer A, event viewer. And show answer. That's correct. So you need to view an application's error that have occurred today. Which tool should you use? You should use the event viewer. Next question. Which of the following sentence must be established if you want to make a secure wireless connection? Select all that applies. A. The brand of the access point. B. The wireless standard used. C. The encryption standard used. D. The SSID of the access points. Let me just read that again. Which of the following sentence must be established? If you want to make a secure wireless connection, a secure wireless connection. Um, let me see. Was the last two okay? I guess it's the last two. Wasn't fully sure. <laughs> Um, so which of the following sentence must be established if you want to make a secure wireless connection? The encryption standard used must be established if you want to make a secure wireless connection. The encryption standard. The encryption standard used must be established if you want to make a secure wireless connection. And also the SSID of the access point. That's basically the name uh, of the uh, access point must be established if you want to make it make a secure wireless connection <laughs> all right next question so you have installed a new maintenance kit for a laser printer with multiple trays that were having paper jams um, what should you do to ensure that the problem has been resolved you should print a test page from all paper trays 
or you should print uh, you should reset the printer's configuration settings or C fill the trays with paper or D print a calibration page I'm gonna go with the first one which is print a test page from all paper trays and that is correct let me just reread that one more time you have installed a new maintenance kit for a laser printer with multiple trays that were having paper jam issues what should you do to ensure that the problem has been resolved you should print a test page from all paper trays all right next question a tablet device is having trouble accessing the wireless network what should you do to troubleshoot the problem select the best three answers you should power cycle device you should use GPRS instead you should check if the SSID is correct you should set up a static IP or you should or E forget the network and reconnect to it later what is the answer I'll say power cycle the device check if the SSID was correct and forget the network and reconnect to it let me just read that one more time a tablet device is having trouble accessing the wireless network what should you do to troubleshoot the problem you should power cycle the device check if the SSID was correct and forget the network and reconnect to it so answer and that is correct uh, next question feel free to pause any moment uh, throughout this, these videos and um, and uh, just to, to look and just to review and, and learn more next question a user's hard drive seems very slow in its reaction time on opening the application what could be causing this problem um, a the drive needs to be initialized B the temporary file needs to be deleted C the drive is fragmented or D the, uh, the drive SATA data connector is loose so a user's hard drive seems very slow in its reaction time when opening applications what could be causing the this uh, causing the problems um, I'm gonna go with uh, the drive is fragmented okay cool I'm right so the answer is C the drive is fragmented um, that's an explanation of why things are going so slow um, a fragmented drive can cause um, everything in your computer to go slow I guess um, a good method is to defrag the drive um, to fix that problem by the way feel free to pause and uh, review this next question a co-worker needs um, to print to a printer from a laptop running Windows 7 the printer has a USB and an Ethernet connector what is the easiest way to connect uh, to the printer uh, to the laptop what is the easiest way to connect the printer to the laptop a use the parallel port B use the network connector connection C use the USB connector uh, D use the Ethernet connector I'm gonna go with the USB connector because uh, it, it should recognize it right away if you plug it using the USB use the USB connector um, use the USB connector okay uh, next question you are troubleshooting a co-worker's computer when you ping the loopback address you receive no response what does what does this most likely indicate in the case is something messed up and wrong with a TC, uh, TCP slash IP it's not functioning right yep let me check time oh 20 minutes already 20 questions for 20 minutes that's a minute for every question just like the real test I guess um, next uh, question um, which file contains part paths like the one shown here? Default equals multi zero, this zero, or this zero, partition one slash windows. Um, so, which file contains the part part paths like the one shown here? Um, uh, boot in in i. Is this this? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Uh. Yeah, in Windows XP, boot i9 contains the archives which contains the path of the operating system through the hardware and software. 
NTLDR is the bootloader file in Windows XP. NTDetect.com searches for basic hardware on the system. Okay, cool. So which file contains the art pads like the one shown here? Boot.inr. Next question. Windows 7 was installed on a computer with two hard drives, a C drive and a D drive. Windows is installed on the C drive and it works normally. The user of this computer complains that his applications are disk intensive and that they slow down the computer. How can you resolve the problem? Move the paging file um, to the D drive. Um, reinstall the Windows on the D drive rather than on the um, on the, on the C drive, defrag the D drive, or decrease the paging file size. Um, I'll say move the paging file to the D drive because I'm guessing the paging file right now is on the C drive also. So by moving it to the D drive, this should speed things up just a little. I'm guessing. So yep, yep, it should speed things up. All right, on to the next question. Um, which let me just take this and drag it over here. So which of the following is the best way to ensure that a hard drive is secure for disposal? Um, you could format the drive, you can f this drive multiple times, you can convert the drive to NTFS, or you can magnetically erase the drive. Guess what answer it is? You probably thought format the drive. Well, it's kind of, you're kind of right. If you format the drive, you're deleting the information in it, but some information is still left over and that's really not safe the best way to completely get um, rid of everything is to magnetically erase the drive okay next answer uh, question um, what should you do first if a printer fails to print very large documents but still prints smaller documents without a problem a check if the cor correct uh, correct type of paper is being used B. Replace the communication cable. C. Change the tone of cartridge. Or D. Add memory to the printer. Well, the answer to this one is kind of um, obvious, I guess. The best thing to do is add memory to the printer because it probably doesn't have enough memory to be able to print the large documents, um, but it probably has enough memory, just enough, to print the small documents. So by adding more memory, it should be able to handle the bigger documents. I hope, I think, I think I'm right. Okay, yep, I'm right, awesome. All right, next um, question. So you get a message upon booting the system that says no hard, hard disk found. What should you check? Select the two best answers. A, that there is power to the hard drive. B, that there is no controller cable connected to the drive. Or C, the CD-ROM is jumper, um, check if the CD-ROM is jumper correctly, or D, that the hard drive driver is installed. My money is going to be on A and B, that, uh, that uh, there's power to the hard drive. If it says oh, no hard disk found, the power to the hard drive might not be connected. Maybe that's why it's not showing up. Or B and B also, it could also be B, that there is no controller cable connected to the drive. I guess if, uh, if it's going to drive something. Um, let us see. Yep. Um, next question. Um, let me just read that one more time. You get a message upon booting the system that says no hard drive, no hard disk. What should you check? You should check if um, that there is power to the hard drive, and you should also check that there is no controller cable connected to the drive. Okay, question 28. If a person takes control of a session between a server and a client, it is known as which type of attack? It is known as a ses um, session hijacker. If somebody takes control of a server to a client, it is known as session hijacking. Alright, next uh, question. Let me just read that one more time again. If a person takes control of a session between the server and the client, it is known as which type of attack? Session hijack. You just built a PC and when it first boots, you hear some deep codes. If you don't have the codes memorized, what are the best devices to examine first? The, the best devices to examine first is mostly the RAM 
the RAM is mostly the thing that goes wrong when you hear a beep. It's, it's, for the most part, it's mostly the RAM or the video quality. There's a problem there, and it should be for these reasons. Uh, it could be for other reasons, but um, I think those are the main reasons why it should be. Yeah. Yeah, RAM and video quality. Next question. A co-worker noticed that, um, wait, hold on, let me just go back, just so you, uh, if you wanted to pause it, I might have gone too fast there. Okay, uh, next question. A co-worker notices that the battery light on the laptop is flashing when the laptop um, is in a docking station. Which of the following should you tr first try to fix the problem? A. Replace the laptop battery. B. Reinstall the operating system. That's a lot of work. Or C. Receipt, uh, um, receipt in the docking station. Or even D. Remove and receipt the battery. Um, the best I, um, option in my opinion is C. Receipt in the docking station. Because um, it's not fully connected to the docking station, it might be why the lights are kind of burn. Crazy, it's probably trying to charge, but it's not fully connected or something. So, I'll say we see it in the docking station. Plus, for installing the operating system, that's just too much. Or replace the ba uh, laptop battery, like that's too far, that's too much work for something um, so simple. You know, try to always go with the simple first. Um, so, I'm gonna say we see uh, it in the docking station. And that's correct. All right. Next question. Um, at first level help desk support technician receives a call from a customer and works with the customer to resolve the call for several minutes and successfully. Which of the following should the technician do next? A. Explain to the customer that he will receive a call back when someone more qualified is available. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. Or B, escalate the call to another technician. Or C, explain to the customer that the problem cannot be resolved and end the call. Or D, continue working with the customer until the problem is resolved. If you really don't know what you're doing, you might end up wasting the customer's time. The best thing to do is, is, is to send the customer to somebody more qualified or better than you to save time for the customer and uh, just help resolve things. So I'm going to go with escalate the call to another technician somebody that's more knowledgeable um, than you everything else it's kind of uh, it's not the best um, I'm gonna click show answer so you can see it cool escalate the call to another technician hopefully I hope my volume is high enough for you guys so you can hear, hear everything I'm saying uh, feel free to pause at any moment in this video to try to answer the question yourself uh, and also to look at the answer to the question at the end of my explanation or, or, or talking through it. Hopefully this helps you in the 802 um, practice tests. Um, which of the following provides the lowest level of wireless security? Web is the lowest level of wireless security, so um, it's definitely this. But um, disabling the SSID broadcast is also even a lower um, level of uh, wireless security because it's, it's it's really the lowest of the lowest uh, any person with half a brain well not half a brain anybody with the right technology right advanced technology can still find your network even if you disable the SS um, ID broadcast um, so I'll, I'll say this is the lowest of the lowest um, of wireless security this is even more secure than this Using web is more secure than the CD SSID, although web is really horrible to use. Don't ever use web, please. Please. Um, yeah, so this is the weakest disabling the SSID broadcast. Next question Which of the following commands can help you modify the startup environment? Uh, D. Registry Editor. C boot config editor, B IP config, A MS config. I'll say MS config. Which of the following commands can help you modify the startup? MS config can help you modify the startup. MS config can help you modify the startup. Okay. 
Um, the Windows Vista sidebar contains blank. Um, the Windows Vista Vista sidebar contains uh, icons, bracelets, widgets, gadgets. I'll say gadgets. The Windows Vista sidebar contains gadgets. Correct. Next question. How can you restart the print spooler service? Select the two best answer answers. Um, you can enter the net stop spooler and then net start spooler in the command line or B net uh, enter net stop print spooler and then net start print spooler in the command line. Um, Um, or C, you could go to the computer management services and restart the print spooler service. Or D, you could go to the computer management services and applications services and then restart the print spooler service. I might get this question wrong, by the way, um, but I'm going to try and use. Um, let me see. I'll try my best in this one. Enter the net stop spooler. Enter the net start spooler. Enter the net stop. I'm gonna go with this one. Net stop spooler and then the net start spooler. And I'm gonna go with this one, uh, which is go to the computer management, go to services, and then restart the print spooler service. Oh, I got it wrong. I got this one. Okay. The answer is A and D. Enter net stop spooler and then net start spooler in the command line. Um, and and for, that's for A. And for D, it says go to the computer management, services, and applications, services, and restart the spooler uh, service. So, how can you restart the print spooler service? Enter a net stop spooler and then a net start spooler in the command line. And you can go to the computer management services and applications services and applications services and restart the print spooler service so go to the computer management services and applications services and restart the print spooler service all right next uh, question um, a customer is having difficulties with his hard drive and the system won't boot you discover that the operating system has to be reloaded. What is the best way to explain this to the customer? A. I need to rebuild the uh, computer. B. I need to format the hard drive and reload the software. C. I need to F this, this computer. D. I need to restore the system. Data loss may occur. Correct answer is D. Just straight up tell them, I need to restore this system. Um, you might lose some stuff. That is the correct answer. D. All right, next question. Um, where are restored points stored after they are created? A, the recycle bin. B, the system 32 folder. C, the system root um, folder. D, the system volume information folder. And I'm gonna go with D once again, the system volume information folder. So where are the restored points stored after they are created? They are stored in the system volume information folder. Next question. Which of the following, following will not secure a functioning computer workstation? Set in a strong password, changing default usernames, disabling the guest accounts. What the heck? Sanitizing the hard drive? What? Yeah, this this is definitely the this is definitely something you should not do. It says, which of the following will not secure a functioning computer workstation? It's definitely this sanitizing the hard drive. If you sanitize your hard drive, you can destroy your hard drive. Please do not do this. This will not secure a functioning computer workstation. This, this is a comical question. <laughs> All right. Yep. Do not sanitize the hard drive. All right. Um, next question. Which of the following is the correct sequence to install a keyboard layout in Windows 7? A, start, control panel, display, or B, start, control panel, 
region and language, keyboard and language, change keyboard or C, start control panel, languages and region, uh, then personalized or D, start control panel, region and language, change keyboard. You could pause it to guess the answer. All right, awesome. Um, the real answer is B. You guessed it. Start control panel, region and language, keyboard and language, and change keyboard. Start control panel, region and language, keyboard and language, change keyboard. Yep. Um, so which of the following is the correct sequence to install a keyboard layout in Windows 7? Is answer B. Start control panel, region and language, keyboard and language, change keyboard. If you're on Windows 7, um, you you could go to this this area right here and just see just see the steps on how to get there. Um, next question. Which of the two following components can affect the host from completing successfully? Select the two best answers. Uh, which of the following two components can affect the host from completing successfully? Um, select the two best answers. Um, CPU and RAM can stop the host from completing successfully. You kind of need the CPU and you kind of need the RAM. So I'll say those two. You could do without a USB hub. You could probably do without a hard drive. If you had a USB, I think you could do it without the CD RAM. CPU and RAM can stop that post from happening correctly. Yep, CPU and RAM. Feel free to pause. And next question. You just upgraded the president's computer video driver. Now the Windows XP system will not boot. Which of the following should you try first? Pay attention to the question. The question says, um, video drive. You just did something to the video driver, so whatever answer it is has to do with the video driver. Um, uh, A says access the recovery console. B says boot into safe mode and roll back the driver. Um, C says reinstall the operating system. D says boot into directory services restore mode. I'm gonna go with B, roll back the driver. Since you did something with the driver, you probably want to try to undo what you just did because it was working before you got there so it should start working again if you just go back in time and roll back the driver basically I'm gonna click show answer and that is correct and feel free to pause and next question which tool in Windows enables a user to easily see how much memory a particular process uses. Which tool in Windows enables a user to easily see how much memory a particular process using, is, um, uses? A. The system information tool. B. Registry. C. Tax manager. D. Appointments um, console. Um, guess. That's right. You probably guessed correct. Tax manager. So which tool in Windows enables a user to easily see how much memory a particular process uses? That's right, Task Manager. Next question. One of your customer reports that there is a large amount of spam in her email inbox. What should you recommend the user do? A. Tell the user to create a new email account. Oh, that's a lot of work. Or B. Tell the user to add the sender to the junk email senders list. That's easy, and that's a, a good uh, advice. Or C, tell the user to find a new ISP. Um, that's a lot of work also. D, tell the user to reply to all spam and opt out of future emails. That's a lot of work. The best answer and the most simplest answer is, um, I believe, B, tell the user to add the sender to the junk email senders list. Yeah, that's the least invasive and uh, uh, the easiest straightforward answer. So I'll go with B. And that is correct. Next question. Wait, let me just read this one more time. One of your customer reports that there is a large amount of spam in, a, in her email inbox. What should you recommend that the user do? Tell the user to add the sender to the junk email senders list. All right, next question. What is the minimum processor requirement for Windows 7? The minimum processor, re 
processor requirement for Windows 7 is um, uh, it's not two gigs, uh, two gigabits. It's one gigabit. The minimum processor requirement for Windows 7 is one gigabit. Next question. John's computer has two hard drives, each 300 gigabytes. The first is the system drive and is formatted as NTFS. The second is the data drive and is formatted as FAT32. Which two of the following statements are true? Select the two best answers. Answer A, files on the system drive can be secured. The system drive is NTFS. Um, secured, NTFS is secured, yeah, I guess. Um, or answer B, larger uh, local drives can be made on the data drive. Logical drives can be made on the data drives. Answer C, the cluster size is larger and the storage is more efficient on the system drive. Uh, or answer D, the cluster size is smaller and the storage is more efficient on the system drive. That's true. And TFS has a smaller cluster size and the data is more um, efficient on, the, uh, uh, on NTFS, uh, which is the uh, also the uh, system drive in this case. And answer D and answer A is the correct answer. Answer A says, files on the system drive can be secured, NTFS is secured, and in this case, the uh, NTFS um, um, is the system drive. So yes. All right, next question. Um, you have been given the task of installing a hard drive on a server for a customer. The customer will be supervising your work. What should you ask the customer first? Answer D. Which version of Windows Server is this? Answer C. Do you want me to shut down the server? Answer B. Are there any current backups? Answer A. What is the administrator password? Guess, guess what the answer is. That's right. The answer is... Um, are there any current backups? Before you do any work, anything at all to anybody else's stuff, you have to always ask, is there a backup? And if there's not a backup, you try to back it up, um, if possible. Yep. Uh, next question. Which of the following log files would reference third-party software error messages? Hmm, log files would reference third-party software messages. This one is actually hard. Um, setup error.log, application.log, system.log, uh, security.log, third-party software. Software. This is software. I'm gonna guess it's application. Log. This is software. Yep, application log. All right. Um, so which of the following log files? would reference third-party software error messages application log. Um, which of the following log files would reference third-party software error messages um, uh, application log? Alright. Alright. Um, okay, just came back from a break. You probably didn't notice that though. <laughs> Um, question 47, which of the follow following log files would reference third-party software? And the answer is application log. Okay, application log. Next question. A customer complains that there is nothing showing on the display of his laptop. Which should you attempt first on the computer? A. Replace the inverter. B. Reinstall the video drivers. C. Boot into safe mode. D. Check whether the laptop is in standby or hibernate mode. Always start with the easiest first. Or the simple, simple-minded questions or answers first, which is um, check whether the laptop is in standby or hibernate mode. So I'll go with that. Correct. Next question. You had several support requests for one PC located in the school cafeteria kitchen. You have already receded the PCIe and PCI cards and replaced the hard drive in the PC. Computers located in the business office or in the classrooms have not had 
this issue? What most likely what most likely causing the issue? Um most likely causing the issue D power burnouts, C 240 V outlets, um B faulty RAM or A um uh, excessive heat. So what is the answer? Pause and guess. That's right, the answer is A excessive heat. Show answer. Um, um, excessive heat is the correct answer. Since it's, it's in a kitchen environment. Um, next question. Um, you just installed a new floppy drive into a computer you use for testing. When the computer boots, you notice that the lights for the floppy stay on. What does this mean? A. The BIOS needs to be reconfigured. B. The cable is connected backward. C. The floppy drive has failed. D. There is too much voltage on the floppy drive. Um, I'm gonna go with B. The cable is connected backwards. Okay. Alright, next question. Oh, we reached, we just reached 50, awesome, 50 questions, under 46 uh, minutes, that's good. Um, um, a burning smell comes from the computer. What is most likely the source? A, thermal compound, B, keyboard, C, power supply, D, AC outlet, and the answer is, that's right, power supply. Uh, next question. A computer in a Windows workgroup can have how many concurrent connections? 10 or fewer, 15 or fewer, 20 or fewer, or 25 or fewer? And the answer is... that's right. It is A. Okay, next question. Um... In Windows Vista, when will a computer dump the physical memory? When the wrong processor is installed? When a device is missing drivers? When the computer was shut down improperly? When the computer detects a condition from which it cannot recover? Um, so what is the answer? In Windows Vista, when will a computer dump the physical memory? The answer is D. Um, when the computer detects a condition from which it cannot recover. Okay, next uh, question. Um, you need to find out which router within the nine step steps between you and another computer has failed. Which tool should you use? Should you use ping? Should you use tracer? Should you use IP config? Or should you use the net command? You should use the tracer command, and that will show you a list of um, um, IPs between you and um, wherever you're trying to go to, wherever you're uh, sending it to. Tracer. All right. Next question. Um, which of the followings are types of social engineering? Select the two best answers. Um, A. Malware. B. Shoulder surfing. C. Tailgating. D. Rootkits. I'll say B. Sh shoulder surfing and C. Tailgating. Which tool is used to analyze and diagnose a video card? A. Device. Wait, did I pause right here? I think I did. Okay. Uh, next question, sorry. Which tool is used to analyze and diagnose a video card? A. Device Manager. B. Disk Bag. C. Services.msc. D. User State Migration Tool. Or, for short, S. U. S. M. T. Um, I'll go with this. Yep. So which tool is used to analyze and diagnose a video card? This dad. Okay, next question. 
which components of the Windows graphic user interface includes the clock and other programs to run in the background. I'll say A, the quick launch, B, the task manager, C, notification area, or D, desktop. So which components of the Windows user um, graphic user interface includes the clock and the other programs that run in the background? That's right, the notification area. Um, you print an image to your printer, but the page sh shows a ghosted image. What could be the problem? A. The drum needs replacing. B. The printer is offline. C. There is an incorrect driver. D. There is a dirty primary corona wire. The answer is A. The drum needs to be replaced. That is why you're getting a ghosted image. Okay, the next question is, which of the following utilities can be used to view the startup programs? A. IP config, B. Ping, C. Reg edit, or D. Distag. Um, to view the startup programs, I'll use reg edit. Alright, next question. You create an answer file to aid in installing Windows 7. Um, which type of installation are you performing? A. Disk image installations. B. USB installation. C. Multi boot installation. Or D. Unintended installation. Uh, and the answer is that's right, you guessed it. It's D. Unintended installation. Show answer. Okay, next question. Um, you work in an internet cafe that has publicly used desktop computers. Um, the computers need to be accessible by anyone. Which type of password should you set in the BIOS? A. A user password. B. An administrator password. C. A supervisor password. Or D. A guest password. That's right. It is a supervisor. Supervisor password. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I thought I was wrong for a minute, but I was right. The supervisor password. Um, next question. Um, Clinton needs a more secure partition on his hard drive. Currently, the only partition on the drive is the C drive, and it is formatted as a FAT32. He cannot lose the data on the drive, but must have a higher level of security, so he is asking me to convert the drive to NTFS. What is the proper syntax for this procedure? A. Change the C. Um, change C. Semicolon space FS. Semicolon NTFS. Change C. Semicolon space NTFS. Um, space FS. Uh, C. Convert C. FS. Semicolon NTFS. Or D. Convert C. NTFS. Space FS. Um, it's going to be this one. Show answer, and that is correct. Hold up. Alright, um, the answer is convert C, semicolon, space, slash, FS, semicolon, NTFS. FS stands for FAT system, NTFS is the actual NTFS. So it converts C, um, FAT system to NTFS. So this is the correct answer. Next question. Um, which command will show you the current network sessions from a PC to the internet? A. IPconfig. B. Ping. C. Net um, state. Uh, or D. Um, NB state. Um, um, which command will show you the current network sessions from a PC to the internet? From a PC to the internet. Is either one or two, uh, C or D, I think. Um, and what is the answer? You guess. You can pause this to guess and uh, come back. Okay. That's right. The correct answer should be, I believe, this. I'm about 70% right. Or I feel like I'm 70% right. Let us see. Yep, I'm right. <laughs> So what command will show you the current network sessions from the PC to the internet? Net state. Okay. 
Next question. Um, where would you go to find out if a hardware in your system is compatible with Windows 7? A. System Tools B. System Properties or C. Windows Compat Compatibility Center or D. Research, mo research Resource Monitor I'm going to go with Windows Compatibility Center since it has the compatibility in its name and, um, and it has compatibility in the question so that's a good hint for me um, that this is the answer Windows Compatibility Center uh, and I am right. Windows Compatibility Center. Okay. Um, 64. I mean 65. A month ago, you set a wireless access point router for a small business that is uh, a customer of yours. Now the customer calls and complains that the internet access is getting slower and slower. As you look at the wireless access point slash router, you notice that it was reset at some point and is now set for open access. Oh no. You then guess that neighboring companies are using the service connection. How can you restrict their access to your customer's wireless connection? Select the two best answers. A. Configure a wireless access point to use wireless protected access. B. Configure MS tap on the wireless access point slash router. D. Disable SSID broadcasting. D. Move the wireless access point slash router to another corner of the office. The answer would be uh, two of them. So guess which ones? It's awesome. That's right. The answer would be um, disable SSID broadcasting. And I guess I'll take this one also. Configured a wireless access point to use wireless protected access. Yep. Okay, next question. Um, how much free space is required to install Windows 7? Select the two best answers. I'll go with um, 16 gigabytes, um, 8 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and 20 gigabytes are the options. I would go with 16 gigabytes and 10 gigabytes. Um, yeah. Um, next question. Which version of Windows 7 does not include Windows XP mode? Um, which version of Windows 7 does not include Windows XP mode? Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate, or Windows 7 Enterprise? Which version does not include the Windows XP mode? I would have to say it's uh, Windows 7 Home Premium does not include the Windows XP mode. Awesome. Next question. When using the command line, a switch blank. When using the command line, a switch enables the command to work across any operating system. All right. When using the command line, a switch is used in application icons. When using the command line, a switch changes the core behavior of a command, forcing the command to perform unrelated actions. When using the command line, a switch alters the actions of a command, such as widening or narrowing the function of the command. And the correct answer is D. Awesome. So when using the command line, a switch alters the actions of the command such as widening or narrowing the function of the command. Um, what is the default initial size of virtual memory in Windows? Is the same as the amount of RAM on the system? Six times the six times the amount of RAM on the systems. Um, 3 times RAM or 1.35 times RAM. It is 1.5 times RAM. The virtual memory size in Windows is 1.5 times RAM. Um, Mary's printer is printing hundreds of pages. Never mind. Um, 
Um, Mary's printer is printing hundreds of pages, and she can't get a uh, get it to stop. Hundreds, wow, that sucks. Um, she has tried to delete the job by double clicking the printer and deleting the print job. What is the best way to stop um, the printer? Um, a clean clear the printer spooler. B unplug the printer. C reset the printer. D turn off the printer. The best way is A clear the printer spooler. <laughs> Next question. A co-worker was installing a new program when the computer suddenly restarted. Now when the computer starts, it gets partially through the boot process and then boots, reboots. Which of the following is the quickest method to get the computer running without losing any of the user's data? A. Reinstall the operating system. B. Boots using last known good configuration. C. Boot into safe mode and perform a Windows system restore, or D perform a factory restore. Guess what answer it is? It is B. Boot using the last known configuration. Okay. Okay, next question. Which utility enables you to implement auditing on a single Windows computer? Um, D services uh, MSC C ADDS B group policy editor or C local security policies. I'm gonna go with uh, I mean A local security policies. Which utility enables you to implement auditing on a single Windows computer? Local security policy enables you to implement auditing on a single Windows computer local security policies the next uh, question which of these commands makes a duplicate of a file move copy dir um, and edit which of these commands makes a duplicate of a file i'm just going to go copy a copy is used to make duplicate of a file in another location yep i'm right copy all right uh next question if you get a code one message about a particular device in the device manager, what should you do? You should close the application and install RAM. You should disable the device. You should update the driver. You should reinstall the driver. I'll go with this, update the driver. If you get a code one, update the driver. Code one, update the driver. Okay, next question. Which version of Windows Vista does not include remote desktop connection functionality? Um, which version of Windows Vista does not include remote desktop connection functionality? I'm going to guess, let me say Windows Enterprise, Windows Ultimate, Windows Business, Windows Home Premium. Out of all that, I'm probably going to say Home Premium does not uh, include remote desktop connection functionality. Yep. All right, next question. After installing Windows 7 successfully, after installing Windows 7 successfully, uh, what should you do next? Um, should you create policies? Should you connect to the uh, we, uh, WLANs? Should you enable the Windows firewall? Should you run the Windows updates? I'm going to go with the last two. All right, next question. What is a common risk when installing Windows drivers that are unsigned? D, physical damage to devices might occur. C, the drive might become fragmented. Um, B, files might be cross-linked. Or A, system stability may be compromised. I'm gonna go with A, system stability may be compromised. So what is the common risk when installing Windows drivers that are on unsigned? System stability may be compromised. Okay, next question. Um, where is the system hive data stored? Um, slash percent system roots, percent slash windows, slash windows, system roots, percent slash windows, system 32, 
slash config slash percent system root percent slash system 32 or slash um, percent system root percent slash system 32 slash uh, config um, I'm just going to go with the last one, I'm not really sure. Where is the registry have data stored? Uh, system32 config. I'm going to go with the last. Awesome. Next question. Megan's laptop runs perfectly when at work, but when she takes it on the road, it cannot get on the internet. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, read this again. Megan's laptop runs perfectly when at work. Megan, Megan. Oh. All right, I'm gonna try to read that again. Um, Megan's laptop runs perfectly when at work, <laughs> but when she takes it on the road, it cannot get on the internet. Initially, internally. The company uses static IP addresses on all computers. What should we do to fix this problem? A. Tell Megan to get a wireless cellular card and service. B. Tell Megan to use DHCP. C. Tell Megan to configure the ultimate configuration tab of TCP slash IP properties. Or D. Um, Configure a static IP address from the ultimate configuration tab of the user TCP slash IP property and enable DHCP in the general tab. Gonna go with D. And the answer is correct. Alright, next question. In Windows XP, how do you fix NTLDR? Is missing a corrupt error. A. Run the system restore utility. B. Restore the registry. C. Restart in shape mode. D. Run in recovery console. Which, um, and the answer, I'm just gonna guess maybe the last one. I might be wrong. I'm right. Awesome. So in Windows XP, how do you fix the NTLDR? Is missing a corrupt error. Run the recovery console utility. Great explanation by her. So in Windows XP, how do you fix the NTLDR is missing or corrupt error? Run the recovery console utility. Next question. Which of the following troubleshooting steps is next after determining the cause? A. Document findings, actions, and outcomes. B. Verify full system functionality and, if applicable, implement preventive measures. Um, C. Establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. Or D. Question the user and identify user changes. So the, again, the question is, which of the following troubleshooting steps um, is next after determining the cause? Uh, I would say establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. Awesome. Alright, the next question is During an installation of Windows 7, you are given an opportunity to load alternative third party drivers. Which device are you most likely loading drivers for? A. CD ROM, B. SCSI Drive, C. USB Mouse, D. BIOS? I'll go with B. SCSI Drive. SCSI Drive. Um, yeah. So during an, an installation of Windows 7, you are given the opportunity to load alternative third-party drivers, which the device are you most likely loading your um, drivers for? Probably SCSI drive. Alright, next question. Um, you are troubleshooting a Bluetooth connection that is malfunctioning. What should you attempt? Select the two best answers. A. Verify the WLAN is enabled. B. Check if you are in range. Um, C. Unclear the devices. D. Turn Bluetooth on and off. I'm gonna go with the range because I know Bluetooth has a certain range. <clears throat> so I'll check if you are in range. And I'll also check if uh, I'll also do this and um, turn the Bluetooth on and off uh, or, or off and on. 
because for some reason just turning things on and off a lot of technical uh, things just a lot of um, um, <clears throat> a lot of um, what's the word um, a lot of technology like you know computers or televisions a lot of things can e be easily solved by just simply turning them off and on so turning something off and on is probably the answer um, and just checking the range for Bluetooth is probably also the answer for the two best answers so if you are troubleshooting a Bluetooth connection that is malfunctioning what should you attempt you should attempt to check if you are in range and also uh, turn the Bluetooth on and off yep alright next question um, your customer is having problems printing from an application you attempt to send a test page to the printer why should a test page be used to troubleshoot the issue a it allows you to see the quality of the printer output b the output of the test page allows you to initiate diagnostic routines on the printer c it verifies the connectivity and eliminates possible application problems or D, it clears the print queue and resets the printer memory. I'll say C, it verifies the connectivity and eliminates possible application problems. So your customer is having problems printing from an application. You attempt to send a test page to the printer. Why should a test page be used to troubleshoot the issue? It verifies the connectivity and it eliminates possible application problems. All right, next question. What does a device driver do? Um, <clears throat> a device driver, A, modifies application, B, works with memory uh, more efficiently, C, improves device performance, uh, and D, allows the operating system to talk to the device. Um, the right answer should be the last one. It allows the operating system to talk to the device. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, next question. So what does the device driver do? It allows the operating system to talk to the device. Um, you are utilizing WSUS and are testing new updates on PCs. What is an example of, what is this an example of? Host-based firewall, application-based lining, patch management, the virtualization. Um, <laughs> I have to read this again. I might not know the answer. Um, you are utilizing WSUS and are testing new updates on PCs. Um, what is this an example of updating PCs? Um, application baseline and patch management, virtualization, host base firewall. Um, I'm just gonna guess. I really do not know the answer. Um, um, application baseline and possibly um, patch management, virtualization, host based firewall, DCPCs, host based firewall. Hmm, what is WSS? Um, I'm gonna go with this one. Nope, I was completely wrong. The correct answer was C, which is patch management. Okay, the correct answer is C, patch management. So you are utilizing WSUS and are testing new updates on PCs. What is this an example of? That This is an example of patch management. Patch management. So you are utilizing WSUS and are testing new updates on PCs. What is this an example of? It is an it is an example of patch management. Um yeah. Um WSUS stands for Windows Server Update Services. Okay. And it is an example of Microsoft Patch Management Management Software. Okay patch management software. So you are utilizing WSUS and are testing new updates on PCs. 
What is this an example of? Is an example of patch management. All right, next question. Um, in the recovery console, what will the command fix MBR do? Uh, A. Delete all viruses on the floppy drive. D. Delete all viruses on the hard drive. D. C. Delete all viruses from the boot sector. Or D. Delete all viruses from the CD-ROM. I'm gonna go with C. Delete all viruses from the boot sector. Okay. All right. Next question. A computer's CPU overheats and shuts down the system intermediately. What should you check to fix the problem? Select two of the best answers. A. Check if the heatsink is secure. Um, that could be one since it has to do with the CPU. Um, check the bias temperature threshold is B. C says check if the fan is connected. That could also be one. And D says check if the RAM needs to be reseated. Nope. Um, I'm going to go with the heatsink and the fan because that deals with the CPU. Correct. Um, A and C. So that's the answer. And on to the next one. So you are troubleshooting a computer that is having trouble connecting to the network. Another technician supposedly just connected it to the LAN with a patch cable. Upon inspection of the patch cable, you find that each plug is wired differently. What should you do? A. Replace the cable with a straight through cable. B. Replace the cable with a crossover cable. C. Replace the cable with a rolled cable. Or D. Replace the cable with a 568B to a 568A cable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with A. Um, replace the cable with a straight through cable. I think straight through cables are for um, different devices and crossover cables are for um, uh, like devices I think so I'm just gonna go with that I'm guesstimating I guess let's see the answer okay I'm right awesome um, what's the 90 and we're almost done guys um, which of the following is a feature of Windows 7 but not a uh, a feature of Windows Vista a user account control B Windows arrows C application dock or D sidebar I'm gonna go with application dock application dock is stuff like this um, look it gives you the like the little thing the little pop-up as I as I go down here um, and it really helps you um, see uh, what's going on going on in those tabs and stuff so uh, I'll go with application dock, Windows, Windows Vista, and Windows 7 both have, have arrows and sidebar and user account control. So it can be those. Show answer, correct. All right, question 91. This is the service that controls the printing of documents in the Windows computer: A printer, B printer server, C print spooling, D print spooler. So guess what the answer is? I'll give you a second. That's right. The answer is, I believe, <laughs> um, Prince Spooler. All right. Now on to the next one. Which Windows utility is used to prepare a disk image for duplication across the network? Which Windows utility is used to prepare a disk image for duplication across the network um, D image clone C ghost B sysrep uh, A X copy I'll go with this one I'm not sure um, I, I think that's it yeah sysrep yeah I'll go with that and that is the correct answer awesome okay on to the next question and Windows Vista where can devices like the display and hard drive be configured to turn off after a certain amount of time? Um, D. Power option properties windows. C. Computer management. B. Display properties. Or A. Power plants. I'm going to go with power plants because that's the most straightforward and makes sense. And also, when I click gear, it says, um, yeah, it talks about some power select a power plant so because of that I'm gonna choose power plants um, I'm probably right yeah let me check I am awesome that's the answer um, the green 
and also an explanation down there. Alright, on to the next one. You have connected several Bluetooth devices together in an ad hoc network. Which type of network have you created? <coughs> ad hoc network. Bluetooth devices. Since you, there's a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices, um, it could be a LAN, WAN, PAN, or NAN. Um, but since it's Bluetooth devices, I'm going to go with PAN because Bluetooth has that short range. So I'm going to go with PAN. Yep, there's a PAN. Alright, on to the next question. Feel free to pause any moment to actually you know, uh, review, guess, and uh, actually read the answers. Uh, hopefully it helps you. On to the next question. A user with a laptop frequently goes into the office to work. However, the laptop only has two USB ports and the user is unable to connect the keyboard, mouse, monitor, and scanner at the same time. What would resolve this problem? Uh, a KVM switch or IEE 1394 connection or a docking station or a Bluetooth adapter. What would solve this problem? Um, I guess what would solve this problem would probably be a uh, a docking station. Yeah, a docking station because a docking station you have more ports and stuff to plug into the uh, for, uh, you know, for the laptop kind of. Um, so you could also say KVM switch, but that's kind of different. Um, a KVM switch is a keyboard, a video, and a mouse, right? Just one keyboard video and mouse and using that one keyboard video and mouse to control many 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 computers so that's kind of different i'll go with a docking station because that gives you more options to plug stuff in for laptops and things of that nature especially if you run out of space so i'll go with that and that's correct so a user with a laptop frequently frequently goes into an office to work however the laptop only has two usb ports and the user is unable to connect the keyboard, mouse, monitor, and scanner at the same time. What would resolve this problem? I'll probably see a docking station. Um, which tool would you use to back up data on the C drive in Windows Vista? Uh, the C drive in Windows Vista. Um, a says NT backup. B says backup status and configuration. C says task manager and D says ASR. For Windows Vista, I'm going to say backup status and configurations to back things up. And that is right. On to the next question. In which step in the Compta A plus troubleshooting process would you question the user? I'll say in the very first step, um, but the option says document findings, um, establish a plan of actions, B, establish a theory, or A, identify the plan uh, problem. I'll see in the first step, which is identify the problem, you would probably question the user at that point. And the answer probably says I'm right. Yep, I'm right. Um, um, step six is document finance, actions, and outcomes. Step five is verify full system functionality, and if applicable, implement preventive measure. Step four is establish a plan of actions to resolve the problem and implement solution. Step three is test the theory to determine cause. Um, and step two is establish a theory or probable cause. And step one is identify the problem. So that's everything, almost everything. Let's go to the next uh, question. Next question, nine, eight. We're almost done, guys. I know it's so long. Um, um, I might cut, cut this video into two parts just to make it easier. Step 98 says the message, um, the Windows boot configuration data file is missing. Required information appears on the screen. Which command would you type to repair this issue? The Windows boot configuration data file is missing or required information. The Windows boot configuration data file is missing required information. Um, how would you fix it? What command would you use to fix it? The first option is bootrec slash fix boot. Um, the second is bootrec space slash fix MBR. The third is bootrec space slash rebuild BCD. And the fourth is boot uh, uh, backwards slash BCD. I'm going to go with uh, rebuild BCD. 
the third, which is C. And that is correct. On to the next question. Let me just reread that. Uh, the message, the Windows group configuration data file is missing. Required information appears on the screen. Which command would you type to repair this issue? Boot rec space slash rebuild BCD. Um, which program can you use to test your RAM? Select the two best answers. Um, back to this. Select the two best answers. Um, CPU Z, I've used that before, so I'm going to select that. Um, um, what else? What programs can you use to test your RAM? Select the two best answers to test my RAM. I'm gonna use Task Manager also because I think Task Manager uh, gives that option. Task Managers and CPU Z to test my RAM. It asks for programs. Task Manager is a program and CPU Z is a program. Check disk, system information, no, no, no. Yep, I am right, Task Manager and CPU Z um, are programs that you can use to test the RAM. Next question. Oh man, this is wonderful, this is the last question. And it only took us 1 hour and 26 minutes to get here. How wonderful. <laughs> um, the last question is 38, um, 100 out of 100. Um, how can the command prompt be opened as an administrator known as elevated mode in Windows 7 slash Vista? Um, select all that applies. <laughs> so how can the command prompt be opened as an administrator um, known as elevated mode in Windows 7 slash Windows Vista? Select all that applies. Click the start, all programs, accessories, then right click the command prompt and select run as administrator. Um, that's what uh, option A says, but option B says click start all program accessories, then right click the command prompt and select run uh, in elevated mode. Um, question C says um, click start, type CMD in the search field, and instead of pressing enter, press PS2 shift enter. Uh, question D says click start, type CMD in the wrong prompt. But instead of pressing enter, press press to shift enter. Um, I don't know if I really know this answer, but I'm just gonna guess. Hopefully, I get it right. Both both parts of the answer right. Um, you could pause the video and pick the correct one. All right. Um, click start all programs accessories. Then right click the command prompt and select run as administrator. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna take this one out which says click start all program accessories then right click the command prompt and select run in elevated mode yeah that, that doesn't sound right this sounds kind of right to me but again i'm just guessing so i'm not sure um click start then type cmd in the search field and instead of pressing enter press crystal shift enter mm. or d click start type cmd CMD in the run prompt and instead of pressing enter, press uh, crystal shift enter. I'm gonna go with these two. I might be wrong, but I'm gonna wing it, guys. Oh, damn, I'm right. Awesome. Because that really was a guess. <laughs> I really guessed on that one. That's 100%. Uh, just guessing skills. Uh, using my multiple choice uh, skills, I guess, that I learned in school, the uh, trial and uh, ever. So click start all program accessories, then right click the command prompt to select run as administrator. Click start, type CMD in the search field, and instead of pressing enter, press crystal shift enter. Um, so that's the answer for the last one. Um, let me click uh, end exam because I'm done. And according to this, I got a hundred. Uh, that's a pass. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of here, and uh, that's the test with the VCE player. Um, if you need the VCE player, or if you want to just get some of these practice tests, um, just um, please uh, put that in the comments, and I might be able to send you a link to where you can download one. Um, I hope this was fun for you. I hope you learned. 
please like subscribe uh, share do all that please comment give me some feedback so I know that this is helping somebody and also um, hopefully it helps me too as I study for the 802 I passed my 801 by the way that was easy the 802 I heard is more difficult so hopefully everything goes well um, I might break this up into two parts or I might just leave it as one part um, just to make it easier um, thank you for watching thank you for your time and uh, yeah peace